So before we build any stairs, there's a few things that we need to know and we need to figure out. Uh, a few of the things that uh, we need to know are some of the rules. I mean, there's, there's obviously code on uh, building stairs. Now in my area, uh, we deal with a few different things. Uh, you should really check with your local area um, just to double check that yours are the same. Uh, so for stairs, here's a, here's a simple drawing and you can see this is the stringer. So that's the wood that's cut out to support the steps. Okay. We've got the riser, which is the vertical piece of wood underneath each step. And we've got the tread, which is of course, uh, the part that you walk on. Those are the three main pieces of a stair that you need to uh, know the terminology for. Now, headroom is the amount of room that you have when you're standing on the last, on the tread that's right underneath whatever the bulkhead is or the ceiling in the level that you're going down to. So that's the headroom. And there's a minimum distance for that. In my area, it's 76 and three quarters. Uh, it's nice to have at least 80 inches, honestly. In our case, we're gonna have uh, about seven feet, 84 inches. So we've got lots of headroom. Riser height can range from five and three quarters to eight inches in my area. So that's the distance from top of tread to top of tread. Okay, uh, nosing, that's the little overhang right here. Okay, it's the, it's the amount of the tread that overhangs the riser from the front of the riser forward. And generally rule of thumb here is about an inch. Uh, depth of treads, which is basically from an imaginary line uh, from the front of the riser to front of riser. So basically from here to here, okay? And they, they like to see that uh, minimum nine and a quarter. Okay, so those are kind of some of the main code related regulations that you're going to have to uh, fall into. Also, when you're choosing your stringer material, two by tens, two by twelves, when, when you've got this cut out they want to see about three and a half inches of, of uh, thickness left from the back of the notch of the cut to the underside. Okay. Now for most stairs that are built correctly uh, with the right tread and, and uh, riser and everything, two by twelves is probably most times what <clears throat> people will be using. If you're doing a deck set of stairs, you might be able to get away with two by 10. A lot of times they're a little uh, more of a rise on each step, you know, closer to the eight inch mark, uh, which changes your angle and, and everything. And uh, usually will give you a little more meat back there left. But uh, two by 12s for interior stairs is pretty standard. Um, now, some of the things we need to know to figure out the whole layout is we need to know the total rise. So that's right from the floor back here. That's right from right down here on the floor up to the top of whatever your uh, subfloor is going to be. Okay, so that's your total rise. Now, your flooring can come into play as well here. Um, if you've got, uh, say, hardwood up there, which is an extra three quarters of an inch and carpet down here in the basement. Uh, those two will probably end up working out pretty equal, so you don't need to make any deductions for that. But let's say you have hardwood up there and vinyl plank or laminate in the basement that's only a quarter of an inch thick. Well, you've got a half inch difference. So you need to uh, calculate what that difference will be. So top of finished floor down here to top of finished floor up there, okay? In my case, 
I'm going to have vinyl plank. I'm going to have the same flooring in the basement as I am up there. So my total distance uh, from concrete to top of the underlay that's going to be under that flooring up there is going to be my total rise. Okay, so I'm going to measure that. Maybe I'll take you with me. Let's see if we can get you a little closer. Okay, so I'm going to drop my uh, tape measure right down to the top of the concrete floor. And I'm going to measure from basically underside of finished floor at the basement to underside of finished floor on the main floor. Okay, so that means I'm going to have three eighths of an inch more on top of this uh, three quarter inch plywood here, because that'll be my sub flooring under the under this flooring upstairs. So I've got when I'm sitting there, I've got 103 and 5 eighths to the top of this plywood. So when I add my 3 eighths for my sub flooring that's going to go under my floor, my finished floor, that'll give me 104 inches total rise. I'll just double check it on this side. It should be the same. <clears throat> yeah, I'm within a sixteenth of an inch there. Okay, so now I know my total rise is going to be 104 inches, okay? Um, something you should always check as well is that the floor that you're going down to is level. So the, the height here, if the floor isn't level, at that end, if the floor at the end where the stairs land is higher or lower than it is down here, that's going to throw your measurement all out. So just double check with the level that you're the same and if not just make an addition or a, or a subtraction at that end so if that end was higher than here by a quarter inch then you need to take a quarter inch off your total rise because your total rise is really from this point to all the way down there where the stairs land right so if the floor that you're landing on isn't level that isn't going to work out okay so we've got 104 inches total rise Okay, uh, width, width wise here, uh, I'm going to be putting half inch drywall on here. I've already got half inch drywall on this side. So let's just see what we have for a width. We've got 37 and 3 eighths. Yeah, 37 and 3 eighths. So minus half an inch is 36 and 7 eighths. I'm going to just make my stairs at 36 inches. That way there's no fighting to get them in. <clears throat> my flooring can be finished right to the wall afterwards anyways, the flooring that goes on the stairs. So if there's a slight gap of a quarter inch or 15 sixteenths or whatever, uh, well not 15 sixteenths, but uh, quarter inch to say three eighths on each side, most floor you can just make that work out anyways. So, okay, so I'm gonna go 36 inch wide my total stair width. Um, now my, uh, with, with these measurements, I can go and figure out how many risers I'm gonna have, which will give me how many treads I'm gonna have. You always have one less tread than risers. And uh, we can figure out where our last tread ends up underneath our bulkhead down there and make sure our headroom's gonna be all right. Okay, so I've already, worked out the math. So we had our total rise of 104 inches. So 104 divided by 14. I just took a rough guess. I originally divided it by 13, but that gave me too big of a rise. So then I went up one more riser. So 14 was my guess. 104 divided by 14 risers gives me 7.43 inches, which is seven and seven sixteenths. Well, that falls in our, in our comfort zone for what our riser heights can be. And it's, it's a pretty comfortable step, honestly. So we're going to use 7 and 7 sixteenths and 14 risers. Now, I already said we're, we always end up with one less tread than we do riser. So that means we're going to have 13 treads. The tread material I have is 11 and a half inches wide, and I'll show you that in a few minutes.
it's a pre-manufactured tread. Um, so when I deduct my nosing off of there, which is an inch, I'll have 10 and a half inch treads. Or my run will be that. Okay, so if I have a 10 and a half inch run on every tread, which was 13 treads, that's 136 and a half is my total run. Okay, so that's my my distance from so my that means my stair set of stairs is going to run right from that surface up there to the end of the last riser is going to be 136 and a half inches. Okay. So now we've got our total run of the staircase. Let's see if it works out down here. So I swung you to the other end now. So the where the top of the stairs is going to be is right over top of the camera. So we've got 136 inches from that point back just behind the camera to the end of our step. Now that ends up coming out basically exactly uh, so that um, our last step is just past this wall. Okay, so top of step is going to be down in this range right here. I know that because I know how many uh, rises I have, which is two rises. So I can mark that on the wall, measure down from my, this is what my headroom's gonna be. This is where I'm gonna hit my head when I come down. So right from there, down to that mark, we've got basically seven feet. So seven feet is 84 inches. Uh, in my area, I've only gotta be uh, 67 and three quarters or sorry, 76 and three quarters. So we've got plenty of room. Like I said before, 80 headroom is nice. It's better for moving furniture and stuff, but check your local code to see exactly what minimum is for you. You can always have more, you can't have less. Okay, so it looks like that's all gonna work out. Um, so we've got all our information now to go and be able to start laying out the, the treads and cutting them. I'm gonna show you the material Okay, so here's my materials. This is my pre-made stair tread. So, let's see, I think it's an inch thick. Where are you there? Yeah, so I'm one inch thick and I'm 11 and a half inches wide. Okay, so that's all gonna work out. These are the two by 12s that I'm gonna use. Uh, to cut my stringers out of. When I calculated it out, I probably only needed 14 footers, but they only sell uh, 16s and 10s, I believe, in my area. So obviously I have to make them out of one solid piece. So I got 16 foot two by 12s. And we're just gonna get ready to show you how to mark them out. So go and check that out. We'll have a link below.